Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Clash. Welcome to the Elegant Magma. This is our volcano series, our volcanology series. And we're going to, what is magma? So I've drawn here a little uh, volcano, and unfortunately, this is not actually magma. This is lava. All right, it is uh, erupting, it is escaping, it is flowing out of this this uh, typical volcano on the surface of the earth, or it could be on the, uh, the sea floor in the ocean, still on the surface of the earth. And you have this lava spraying out from the volcanic uh, central vent. And it also flows down the side of the volcano. Now, the main difference between lava and magma really is that magma is produced, generated, and exists under surface so it's within the crust the lithosphere and the asthenosphere and there's certain regions or depths in which this magma is created but it is under the surface so we call this intrusive is intrusive or another word is plutonic okay from the word pluton so magma is underground and that means that the opposite uh, lava is lava comes from our trusty magma without magma there is no lava but magma has to come above or through onto the surface of the earth to then be called Lava. So lava is the, um, the surface version of magma. And that's what we really ex uh, experience with volcanic eruptions is that lava uh, in some of the volcanoes. But magma is where it comes from and how it originates. So let's define magma. Magma is defined as Partially molten material. Okay, so partially means that it's not fully, completely changed. Uh, it's like half and half. It's on the way to. It's it's um, you know semi or halfway or percentage. Basically, molten means liquid form. So how do we get it? All right, so the formation, how do we get it? So let's do formation. How do we produce magma? What is it? Well, it is molten material. That material derives or comes from pre-existing rock. Don't forget, our planet is one of the four terrestrial planets that orbit the sun. It is one of the... Um, four rocky bodies, large planetary rocky bodies. So our planet is basically a large rock, uh, obviously with water and atmosphere and gravity and all things make up a beautiful planet. But it's mostly rock of different densities and some compositional changes and some changes in elements, but it's all rock. And it formed obviously 4.6 billion years ago as a molten mass and gravitational pull started to bring in more and more material to make it larger and the formation of the moon which we'll get onto in a different video but you have this this pre-existing rock and when you take this rock i'm gonna put i'm gonna put rock here okay i love my rocks to be very very cube cubic um so my rock um is underground at certain depths where according to the geotherm and the pressure in PSI or mega or gigapascals, where the rock goes under certain conditions whereby it is allowed to melt or it goes through melting based on temperature and pressure. So this rock then changes its state of matter as a phase change and it turns to, I'm going to do a little, little highlighter here of red. There we go. 
Here we are. Some nice liquid, liquid rock. Okay. This we call molten. Okay. Or liquid. So it has gone through a phase change due to the environment, heat and pressure, allowing the rock to go from a solid uh, composition, solid uh, structure to a liquid uh, phase, liquid stage. So, and this is called magma. But magma, magma contains more than just a liquid. Now, a liquid, the liquid portion is called melt, which is kind of obvious yet confusing at the same time because melting creates it. So, why is it called melt? But it's melt. It also contains gases, dissolved gases, mostly water vapor some CO2 and some lovely SO2. Again, we know these are also greenhouse gases. So you can imagine what happens when they are erupted into the atmosphere. There's changes, obviously. Okay. And we'll go through that in a different video in the Earth's history and uh, volcanism, how it formed our atmosphere and different um, planetary characteristics. Then we have, there's partially, right? It's partially molten. So it's not completely liquid. There are some bits in there that are still solid. Because according to the Bowen's reaction series and differential melting and fractionation, you get some little bits of solid silicate. Silicate is silicon oxygen based uh, minerals. Okay, and these are called crystals. So there are crystals. When you see crystals in any kind of uh, mineral discussion with science, always think solid minerals. All right. So you've got the liquid portion, which is melt. Think of it as a massive soup. Right. The liquid part of the soup is called melt. There are some gases inside the soup or inside the magma. OK. Uh, that are either trapped or kind of escape slowly. And there are solid bits like the croutons, the solid bits of um, the magma, which are called the crystals, which are the solid minerals. Now, some minerals melt, some don't. Depends on the temperature. Depends on the temperature of the magma. Okay. Now, if it gets over around 1300 degrees Celsius, then pretty much all the minerals are going to melt. But again, it depends on the depth and the pressure and the temperature at which that rock is going through its partial melting. And this is called going from the solidus, which is the start of where it starts to get partially melted through the partial melting stage to 100% melted, which is called the liquidus stage. So there we have it. That is what magma is. So once we have made this magma, which contains the melt, the crystals and dissolved gases, now dissolved gases are also called volatiles, okay, based on how they control the impending eruption if magma gets to the surface. We'll get to that later on in a different video. But once you have the magma, now this could be at a certain depth. This could be uh, close to the um, close to the crustals of the surface maybe you know, 10 to 15 kilometers, also could be as deep as 150 kilometers where it's in the asthenosphere, in a section of the asthenosphere called the LVZ, or low velocity zone, based on how slower or how much how the seismic waves, the earthquake waves actually slow down in this depth range of the Earth's interior, signifying that there is a change of state of matter from that solid, dense material into a less dense, more partially melted uh, area. But we'll get onto that again in a different video because there's more to talk about. But as this is rising up, now why, why does the magma rise? Well, it's liquid. The surrounding rock that makes up the crust is obviously silicate minerals based, okay, because the the magma is melted from this pre-existing rock or country rock around it, um, or per so country rock or parent rock. Either one means that the rock around it. Now, it's solid, obviously, and dense, 
and the magma is very hot or hot compared to the surrounding rock, okay, and therefore it is less dense. So it's going to make its way up through the crust. It could be oceanic crust or continental. If it's ocean crust, it'll be a shorter distance because it's thinner. If it's continental, it'll be a lot longer distance and it will because it's a thicker crust but it's going to rise up slowly and eventually get to the surface and it's going to uh, kind of like bulge out towards the surface and it's going to find cracks and gaps and fractures in the crust could even make its own uh fracture and 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 gaps just like in the mid-ocean ridges uh that Hess found in 62 with the sonar is that it will find its way through eventually or even burn its way through and once it gets through onto the surface then we call it the lovely lava and we start to generate volcanism now some magma may not even get to the surface it may stop right here it may stop right here just below the surface and once it stops rising it's going to slowly cool down Now, this is called intrusive igneous rock because magma, when it cools down, it crystallizes and consolidates, it turns into igneous rock. And we call this intrusive igneous rock. And the most common, the most easy to remember, is our lovely granite. Okay. Uh, granite, or we can also have andesite as well. So, because most of the continental crusts are mostly made of granite and these are also once they form they form different shapes and sizes and different forms and we call these plutons and i'll do a video on plutons too because there's different types and different styles based on the cooling and, and shape of these different kinds of plutons that are intrusively made intrusive and they are igneous rock and again it is the start of my my start of the lovely rock cycle so we can cl clue in and tie in a lot of the rock cycle information that we go through uh, here as well so it's all one big process all right so it comes to types of magma the main three now there are four okay there are occasionally four types there's one more um kind of in here which is dacite but that's not always commonly used but the three main ones are basaltic andesitic and rhyolitic now these are three main types of magma and they are characterized by their composition and their different characteristics so what's in them will control their behavior Okay, how fast they move, if they're runny or not, if they contain gas or not, the certain temperature and kind of rocks that they form once they cool and cons consolidate. So on the left here, I have the, uh, the column of different characteristics from uh, composition up here to silica, viscosity, gas, percentage, temperature and rock. Now, quick thing, viscosity, that is definition is the resistance to flow how much does that liquid not want to flow okay so how thick is it if you turn the liquid over will it run quickly and effortlessly with gravity or will it like not want to move will it kind of stay there and slowly move think of like pancake syrup compared to really chunky thick peanut butter okay so that the both liquids in a sense um they're both liquids but one is thicker and slower and compared to the other one which is thinner and much more runny okay so viscosity is that next thing is silica by percent weight wt is weight silica is sio2 this is silicon and oxygen now, as I discussed in the chemistry of lava and magma, these two combined, these two combined equals 75 percent of the of the elements in the Earth's crust. So oxygen 
is going to be 46.6%, and silicon is about 27.7%. So a very large percentage of this um, of this uh, Earth's crust is silicon and oxygen. That's where we get the silicate minerals from. And oxygen is very easy to combine chemically with other elements, so we get a lot of oxides in our crust. Okay. So composition: the elements that are are the majority in each type. So basaltic or mafic or mafic. Basaltic uh, magma is high. This arrow up means high in iron and magnesium. All right, intermediate is the intermediate of all four. So we've got uh, potassium, sodium, iron, and magnesium, all kind of like mid-range mid intermediate levels. And then rhyolitic is the opposite of basaltic. So it is going to be low in iron and magnesium, but high in potassium and sodium. So basaltic magma will be low in sodium and potassium. Okay? Now, in terms of... Um, percent weight of silica, all right, which is very important um, compound to discuss, okay? So let's start with our basaltic, all right? Basaltic is 45 to 55%. In uh, rhyolitic is going to be 65 to 75%. And obviously, intermediate will be our 55 to 65%. All right, so even the... Uh, basaltic mafic magma still has 45% of silica. So a lot of the composition is based on our oxygen and our silicon. Okay. Now, viscosity, that's going to be high, medium, or low. Basaltic is because of the silica. The silica, the silica is in control or has control over the magma's viscosity or how easy does it flow or the resistance to flow now with low with low silica that means that the viscosity is low that makes it uh fast moving and runny as a characteristic because it's low in viscosity now that also translates to the amount of gas that it can trap and hold okay and this also is very low because when you have not very thick magma, it allows the gas to escape naturally, slowly, uh, consistently. So the gas is not trapped inside. It is released um, frequently and consistently. Okay. Now, the temperature of this lava is going to be a thousand degrees, obviously uh, centigrade because we're scientists, up to around 1200 degrees Celsius. Now, we have registered some some magmas to be up to 1350 degrees celsius but that's rare to find okay um and then we've got um so we looked at basaltic magma and they they connect so the silica viscosity gas and temperature all connect to each other okay they all have a relationship and it starts with silica so if the rhyolitic uh, or felsic magma is high in silica, that means that the viscosity will be high. It's very thick. And it's a slow-moving magma. Now, with it being thick and high in silica, it's going to have a high amount of gas trapped, which makes this explosive. Because the gas is trapped the pressure builds up inside the magma, and eventually the pressure is going to give, and the threshold is going to be met, and then you have the explosive eruptions that we'll get to in this volcano uh, series. Temperature is the opposite. So we're looking at um, 650 to 800 degrees Celsius, so on the colder end of the continuum, okay, still extremely hot. I mean, six and a half times boiling water, still very, very hot, but you know, on the colder end compared to basaltic. Again, the thicker magma is going to be colder because you have more heat. It's going to cause more energy in the atoms and allow it to spread out and be less dense and therefore move faster. So again, we have basic thermodynamics working there. Colder something is, generally the less it's going to move. And then the intermediate is going to be, again, medium 
viscosity based on medium silica. And then we're going to have medium gas content, trapped gas. And we're looking at 800 degrees to 1000 degrees as a medium temperature. Okay. So the rock, so the, the intrusive rock, uh, this will be intrusive, which would be basaltic rock. The extrusive equivalent uh, of this is going to be gabbro. So when the lava comes out and cools, it's going to have a lot of gabbro as well in there. Okay. So the andesite or sorry, gabbro can also be uh, intrusive as well. Okay, the opposite to andesite is going to be diorite. So this will be the intrusive version of the andesite again. This is going to be magma turned to lava based on the characteristics. And then the last one, rhyolite, rhyolitic uh, magma is going to turn also into granite if it does not erupt and stays in. So again, intrusive. Okay, so. My apologies, the Gabbro is going to be, let's erase that for a second. There we go. The Gabbro is going to be the intrusive version if it does not um, melt. So you have Gabbro around the mid ocean ridges and the ocean crust. Okay, and you have granite being the main composition of the continental crust. All right. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on magma, what it is, and you can take away a lot of stuff from this. And I uh, hope you guys subscribe and leave a comment and look forward to seeing you in the next video.